So this will be a lecture that I've written. I have to accept my current mental circumstances I find myself in. If I'm being hurt, or things are stolen from me, or if I'm failing at something, or arguing with another in imagination, I have to accept these are my mental circumstances. Acceptance of these circumstances in imagination is the start of change. For acceptance, the opposite of denying it exists causes the fear to dissipate. We deny because we fear. We accept because we are unafraid. Acceptance is made effortlessly when you know that all mental problems have mental solutions in imagination. One may struggle to accept their undesirable states because they believe there is no solution to this problem. So acceptance feels like a death sentence. But every problematic mental circumstance you find yourself in has within it a mental solution. So from this understanding, one must see problems as existing within themselves, not outside of themselves. This causes a boost in confidence because you know that you can't solve it in the mind, because you are the operant power here. Seeing that every mental problem is a problematic assumption about the self in the mind, then you being the creative power can create a new assumption to resolve it. You are resolving yourself. Circumstances truly do not matter in imagination, because circumstances are dormant and need to be awakened and made alive to matter. The only one who can make a circumstance matter, which is to say, feeling it as a present reality, is you. Only you can take a horrifying thought and feel its reality until it scares you. Only you can take that exact horrifying thought and not react at all. The same way you and I can look at a piece of art and see entirely different perspectives, Likewise, thoughts are pieces of art. These pieces of art are a part of ourselves. A scary thought does not have to scare you. We can change how we relate to thoughts. You cannot seek to the world to tell you who you are. A person who does not know his I am's will look to the world to tell him his, what his I am's should be. But through his search, he'll come to find that there is no consistency. To one he is good, to another bad. To one smart, to another stupid. A man who does not know who he is will look to society to tell him who he is. But what he does not see is that he's looking at a mirror. They do not know who you are because you do not know who you are. We are defined in this reality. That is to say, there is a length, height, and width. We can measure and we can define. Likewise, we must define our I am. We must know exactly who we are. Define yourself because you have the freedom to do so. Don't keep wandering in the fog looking for the right person to tell you who you are. You are looking for approval from the mirror to accept a certain wonderful I am. But a mirror can only reflect. Let your I am be the daylight that removes the fog and clears your sight. In an instant, your mental mirror, your mental circumstances will change. During the end of the search, man will have to answer this question. Who do I say that I am? It is who do I say, not who do they say. Now in this part of the journey, man has to give an answer. He knows he cannot keep living in a seek for an I am. He knows that it's just a mirror. He cannot keep looking to the world asking, does this mean that I am this or that? He must define himself. He must become cubic in a sense. Tired of being tossed by the wind, he must take root. But root takes the next obstacle, which is trust. Who do I say that I am? Must be answered. But the answer to this question is only worth the amount of trust that is put into it. Man has to genuinely have, genuinely, with faith, trust the answer he gives, which is to trust his own imagination being enough evidence that he is who he wants to be. But what is he trusting in? I am. So he is trusting himself. I am worthy. I am loved. I am, you name it. If he trusts in I am, the present tense feeling of being, he'll be given an ecstasy as a gift for trusting. He freed a part of I am, and that's what that relief is. Continue defining and freeing I am. Free yourself. The only bondage man is in is the bondage of I am. I am puts you in bondage and I am frees you. I am is the prison, I am is the key. 
Then man sees he was given the greatest gift of all, the I am. This I am is the greatest instrument in the world and must be treated as so. Learn to play the instrument of I am and create a harmony with it. Do not deny I am. See what you are I aming within you by observing your mental circumstances. Accept that you have played I am in a bad tune by adding to it disharmonious self-concepts. Then from this acceptance, change the tune. So we use I am to move in the way we desire to inside of imagination. To move inside imagination effectively, one must bring reality to the new mental circumstances. I am is the reality that must be brought to states to have any effect on you. So success and failure lie in imagination. They lie in I am. Become successful in the mind by fully embodying a new state, just like you are embodying one now. Discard the old I am and accept a new one. Accepting the fact that you are merely in a state now causes it to lose power because states are powerless without I am. If you find yourself fearing your imaginal acts, tell yourself, I am in the state of fearing these thoughts. Seeing it's just a state, a reaction, then change the state, the I am. I am is the prison and I am is the key. I grew up with abuse, which is to say I was given frightening impressions upon my imagination. I developed an inner world that scared me. I consistently lived in the state of I am not instead of I am, meaning I grew up consistently proving to myself that I am not worthless, I am not unwanted, I am not stupid, I am not unloved, I am not abandonable. So I constantly would do things Constantly would think things to prove that I am not X. Even though I would say I'm not stupid, lazy, unwanted, etc. I, deep down, if I'm honest with myself, felt those concepts to be true. I felt these to be true because of my inner circumstances I found myself in, in imagination. I felt these concepts as a present fact. I hated it and wanted to deny it, but I did not feel I could accept the wonderful self-concepts. So on the one hand, I felt I was something bad but I could not accept that I did this, that I feel this, for fear of being stuck without a solution. And on the other hand, I felt the solution was to accept new self-concepts, but I didn't feel worthy enough to accept them. Both of these hands I could not accept. So I went towards the only other way, which was denial. I denied under my breath for years that I am not X, whatever bad self-concept that is. But then since I felt I was that bad self-concept deep down, I would manifest it into my world. And then the inevitable would come. What is the inevitable? My harvest. My own thoughts and feelings that I have planted in my garden of, of imagination. The one cause. When it would manifest, I, would f I felt defeated. That there was nothing I could do. But look at my mistake. I was not accepting my own harvest. I was not truly seeing how I feel about myself. I was so focused on what I did not want to be. I was so focused on what I did not want to happen. I did not look at I am. Thus I could never find the problem and I could not find the solution. The problem is I am and the solution is I am in imagination. We are I am passing through states in imagination. So when you identify yourself with the I am that precedes all states, then you feel yourself to have the ability to change. Even though I desire deep down to not feel those things, having a deep want for something does not mean you are it. You can want it with all your heart to be X, but it does not mean you are X. So don't confuse the feeling of a deep desire for something with the feeling of fulfillment. The goal is to stop desiring, stop feeling I am not, I wish I could be, and feel I am. The name is I am. Why fight with I am instead of saying I am worthy, I am intelligent? I am I'm wanted, I am loved. If I'm fighting my concepts and I'm not winning, then I have not yet occupied the new state. For in, order a, for in order for a state to be occupied, it must be with I am. The only victory is I am. Instead of eternally fighting why you are not a self-concept, end the fight within and gain victory by saying, with a present tense feeling, I am the self-concept you want to be. You do not have to prove anything to anyone within you, for they are only mirroring you. You just have to be it in the mind, and everyone within you has no choice but to see you that way if you fully see yourself that way. 
Now in a practical manner, let's take a look at a quote Neville consistently used. An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. Take these words and just meditate upon them throughout your day. Repeat this phrase, not as an odorless phrase, but a phrase with a vibrant fragrance. Let it captivate you and become interested in it. Smell it repeatedly and discover all the notes. Try to understand each word and what they mean in this context. What I think you'll find is what I found. That the most important words in the sentence are, though false. The words assumption and persisted are of great importance as well. But the words though false have a freedom that is attached to it unlike the other words. The assumption is false. Yes, we are assuming something to be true that we know is false at the moment. We have to accept this. If we do not accept this, we'll try to force ourselves. But force implies multiple powers at play. There is only one power, in here, in imagination, and that is I am, which is the inner you. So acceptance is unity and force is separation. This acceptance, I hope, causes a relief that you do not have to pound it in your mind all day, exhausting yourself to believe it to be true. It is false. Accept the assumption is false for now. The question becomes, what are we assuming that is false? We are assuming a state about ourselves. So when we are assuming or appropriating a state, we have to see that we are assuming a state that is, that is why we are reaping what we are reaping. To reap a new harvest, one must change the state. So we must, take this, that we must take the state we want to be and see it only as an assumption. The assumption is false based upon my state right now. If I were in a new state, the assumption would no longer feel to me a long-distant dream, but an ever-present reality. Now that we have less resistance by accepting the assumption is false, meaning it contradicts my current state, let us see what Neville is trying to tell us to do with this false assumption. Imagine Neville asking you this question. The assumption you want is false about yourself. But what if what you are now is also an assumption? And the only reason why you feel it to be true is because you are trusting in it. That what you are now was once an assumption that was false as well. And your trusting, it is in, trusting in it is the only reason why you are accepting it, experiencing it. What if you trusted in a different assumption? Would, you, would your experience change? If this is true then what I am now is only as real as I make it. It is a dream in a way that I forgot was a dream. A state is a dream that I'm dreaming about myself. It may be a nightmare, but I can, I can always awake from it, since I am the dreamer, and apart from the dreamer, there is no dream. So the assumption is false, but if I were to experience it as being true within myself and make it feel real to me, it ceases being false in imagination. The assumption is false in the outer world, but it is true in the world of imagination. The question is, are you going to accept the imagination that is being the truth about yourself? I hope you believe in imagination. When we, then we, we persist in the new state until it becomes our natural way of being. Then in the most natural way it will come into your world. We must feel natural about it in imagination, for it is as within, so without. You may not feel natural about the new state immediately. You might, but if you don't, then persist. Remember, persistence is not in trying to become. It is in being the new state. Being it means to experience it. There is no fulfillment in trying to be. The only fulfillment is I am. Now, I'm quoting Neville. It does not matter what you've done. You, may have, you might have been cruel. You might have been a thief. You might be this very night running away from some deed. I will say you are forgiven. Believe now in God. God is your own wonderful human imagination. And with him all things are possible. So regardless of what your background might have been, regardless of what you are doing now, have an object, have a desire, consume, a consuming desire. You have the power right now to change the inner self. You don't have to live in nightmares and slumps in imagination. You need nothing but the imagination to change the self. Without anything, you can conjure up a new dream and occupy and feel the reality, feel the reality of that dream. Imagination cares nothing about your background. Imagination cares nothing if you've made mistakes in the past. Imagination does not even care about your present reality. 
Imagination has forgiven everything. It holds nothing from you. All states in imagination, these are dreams awaiting your occupancy. So how does one put this material into practice? Here's what I found to work beautifully for changing states. The goal is to change the self. The self is I am, and I am is attached to certain states. So as Neville said, start from the premise, I am the I am, moving through states. So how can we change states effectively? Neville constantly said to trust in God, but what does that really mean? Now I'm quoting Neville again. Believe in the infinite wisdom and power of a presence that is in you, and believe that presence to be your imagination. Do not argue the point. You carry the request to this one within you as though you say, is it all right? He will invariably say, yes, it is done, invariably. He doesn't argue. He doesn't point to your background. He doesn't point to any restrictions of the past. He played those parts. So whatever you want, go to him, commune with him. Bring it to a head as though it were done. Is it done? And get confirmation from this deeper self. Yes, it is done. And then drop it. Your conscious reasoning mind cannot reach the depth necessary to set in motion all the causes necessary to bring it to pass in your world. So don't try to analyze it. Leave it where it is. It will happen in a way you never suspect. So if I were to make this into a step, I would say step one, define a desire. If this desire was to be realized, what would that imply about you? So we're looking for a self-concept. It has to imply something about you. Feel that what you desire has already been said yes to. It has already been said yes by the only creative power there is. Trust in God, which is in the context, is to trust in imagination. So you see a scene or hear a lovely conversation. To trust this imaginative experience as real is to trust in God. There is no trying to get. Remember, it has already been said yes to. All it awaits is your occupancy. All you have to do is experience what already has been said yes to. Do it in love for yourself. That you have saved yourself from an undesirable state. I have found this method is the simplest than other methods, that but, require, but requires trust and faith. However, there, there is a practice within this method that must be developed. That is to remove the conscious reasoning mind from the equation. What tends to happen is the moment one goes to visualize or hear what they want, and they choose to feel after it, they become scared. The reasoning mind comes and takes the blessing away. This is a feeling, a pull into doubting what you see and hear. Practice resisting the urge to reason when you imagine a new state, and practice believing the divine eyes and divine ears. When you stop the urge of reasoning, your desire will be met within. You will feel euphoria, and from this euphoria you will naturally have thoughts from this new state. This euphoria is a personal one. So find that feeling that would be success to you, and appropriate that state as your own. Then your reactions to life will change automatically. Now walk in this new state of mind and be patient. I must confess, on this level, I do not know the means that will be employed. On this level, I have to learn to be patient and simply persist in being. But you have planted this in your mental garden, and it will grow into your experience. You will have to confront your harvest, for you are confronting your harvest right now. The harvest you are experiencing was once, once planted in the same garden. Your harvest is your state's. To quicken the learning curve of this method, apply this method to others. See people in your life doing wonderfully. Hear them tell you something wonderful about their life. Experience it within and feel it It has already been said yes to and move on with the day. Then do it for something else. But I urge you to do it in love. If you are disturbed between the planting and the bridge, persist in the new state for the only thing that is expressing are your states. Persistence is not stressful, but in fact the opposite. Experiencing being what you want is ecstasy. It is ease. And the more you persist in experience it, the more natural you will feel about being it. Here's what I do not do while I imagine a new state for myself. I do not argue the point. I do not concern myself with trying to figure out the means or when it will happen. I do not wonder if it's possible. I do not feel any fear whether or not it will work. I remove concepts from the future and past from my mind. 
I remove all grudges towards anyone. I let go of all these concepts and experience being that new state. It feels entirely natural when you suspend reasoning. Then I conjure up a scene or a conversation implying the desire is already done. I like to see this as a dream. The reason I see it as a dream is because I see my current reality as a, as a dream as well. It is all dreams to me. So I conjure up a, as a dream and then I enter into it. I do not become frightened. I see the dream from a third person perspective and then I enter into it as a first person perspective and experience it just as though it is true. This new dream that I conjured up is just another version of me experiencing what I want to be. But I'm not pretending. I actually experience being that version. I hear what he hears. I feel what he feels. I see what he sees. The people in my mind see me the way I want them to see me. I do not question or argue. I just say yes to experiencing it and yes to everything in my imagination. I feel the yes, not just say it. I say, I want to experience being X. Then I feel in my imagination, which is myself, say yes. And I trust implicitly in that yes and proceed to experience it. So my only goal is to actually experience what I want to experience because that's all I would do if I were the person I wanted to be. Imagination has already said yes. If imagination has not, uh, has not said yes, then you would not be able to imagine it. The power is not in the word yes, but in the feeling. So go within and change your imaginative world to how you want it to be or how it ought to be to you. Feel that what you are now experiencing has already been said yes to. Accept and trust in the yes. And then a change will happen in your feeling. And you'll start to think from. And your reactions will change towards your world. But don't become fixated or worried if you're thinking from it. The moment you feel you are it now is the moment you are thinking and feeling from the state. Remember, we think and react from states. So change this state, not each and every thought. You cannot be in want of evidence of what you are currently being. The state inside you is complete. It just needs to be occupied. The evidence, the dream is there. You must see that the evidence of who you are before your eyes is also produced by the imagination. So it is in the imagination that one must change. And the experience you seek is within. So learn to make imagination a heaven, a refuge. Let it become the safest place to be. It has the capability and ability to become one. That if you were to tell it all your fears, for it knows your fears more intimately than anyone in the world, it would comfort you. Somewhere in this world of imagination, there is a dream where you are who you want to be. Find it. And quench your thirst by entering into an experience being it. Persist in experiencing it until it becomes natural to you. And then it will naturally enter into your world. I'm ending with a novel quote. All you have to do is imagine you are doing it.